Hello everybody, my name is Thies, the Atomic Jedi, and today I'm going to talk about steel. I'm going to talk about the European steel industry in particular, and why it is having a bad time. First, I'm going to explain to you how steel is made and why this is important. So as you can see, this is a nice diagram. Uh, I will make sure that the link to this diagram is available to you below in the description. Uh, so this is the basic uh, formula. You have iron ore, you add coal, and in the end, after a whole lot of stuff has happened, you turn that into steel, carbon steel in particular in this case. Now the iron ore that you get out of the, get out of the mountains or wherever you get your iron ore is not ready to be put in the blast furnace. First you need to make sure that you crush it and turn it into pallets, uh, which then can easily be handled and which makes uh, using it in the blast furnace much more convenient. You also need coke not the, the, the thing that people use, but it's actually a reduced form of coal, and you need limestone. Now the limestone is there to make sure that you can get the impurities out. It functions as a flux, so you get sulfurs and all that kind of stuff, and using the limestone you can get all those impurities out. After uh, this mixture comes out of the blast furnace, so obviously with the impurities taken out, Basically what you have is uh, iron, uh, reduced iron, so there's a lot, of, uh, a, lot, a lot of oxygen is taken out of the iron, bonded oxygen, because iron ore basically is rust, as it were. Uh, but this, now it has um, you know, made bonds with these, with these uh, carbon atoms that are in there, and then you get this converter stage, you, you, you basically introduce a lot of oxygen in this process and you make sure that your steel becomes very pure. You can also see that scrap is added sometimes to this, uh, to this phase and the reason why that is done is to make this whole process more uh, basically uh, reduce the energy required to do this because it's you, you know it's already there and you don't need to uh, I mean, it reduces the need for for uh, converting. You also have a second way of making steel. This is, this is using the electric arc furnace. And this is mostly used for, uh, you, you know, scrap metal is mainly used as the primary input for this way of making steel. Now, the thing that you see below the continuous casting, that you should also imagine being here after, you know, it, it has been in the converter, the steel then gets, the molten steel then gets put into the ladle, and it then uh, basically is used to cast these uh, steel billets. Um, so, uh, steel is incredibly important, and you can, you can just tell by the huge volumes of steel that are being produced in the world each year. 1.8 billion tons of steel are produced uh, worldwide. China produces roughly 1 billion tons. The EU produces almost 170 million tons per year, which leaves roughly 630 million tons for the rest of the world. Now, why is domestic steel so important? In, 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 with domestic, I mean uh, steel that is produced within the EU. Um, if we don't want to sell everything to China or India in this case, because India is also a giant in the steel making business, just merely by the fact that the, 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 the vast majority of all the steel production uh, facilities in Europe are owned by in people from India. Uh, so, so, so that's, that's, that's a thing we need to keep in mind. Uh, but it's, it's, it's vital for Europe's economic security and independence because uh, there is so much that happens with steel in Europe that we, you know, we, we build bridges, we, we have a car industry, we have offshore industry, shipping, you name it. All of that is dependent on steel and it is always better to have your own domestic supply of uh, steel uh, rather than having to import it. Um, but also, if you look at... Um, you know, all are good intentions. 
uh, for instance, all those windmills that we would like to build in the, in, in the EU, suppose that we did not have the steel production, the domestic steel production that we have today, uh, then I'm pretty confident that not a single windmill will ever be built in the EU if we didn't have domestic steel production. So what is the problem? Why is steel having such a problem, right? Um, well, first, let's have a, have a look at, at, at what is actually happening. So for instance, Tata Steel in the Netherlands, and let me, let me take, take the map uh, just, just, just to show you what these things look like. So this is the Netherlands. Uh, we have a huge steel plant over here in uh, Eimuiden, uh, which is uh, owned by Tata Steel. Right, so what you see, the, the, this this used to be this used to be uh, called hoog ovens, and hoog ovens basically is a, a, you know because the blast furnaces are basically high up in the air, uh, not not floating in the air obviously, but those are relatively high up in the air, and that's why we call them hoog ovens. So over here, all of this real estate here, and just let me zoom out for a little bit. Just, I mean, most of you have been to Amsterdam, right? Or, or a lot of people have been to Amsterdam. So if you go to Amsterdam, this is basically the part that most people visit. They don't get outside of this part here, right? Because you see these, these green rows, those are, that, that, those are the places where there are trees, obviously. Uh, then you get these rows over here. Those are the canals. And, and usually most tourists stay inside of the canals. So just zooming out, the steel, the steel plant in Eimuiden is bigger it's bigger than the inner city of Amsterdam. It's it's enormous. So when we go down all the way here, what you what you see is this is a very uh, big operation. You see the white uh, the white over here, the limestone. You see the rust brown over here. That is iron ore. Uh, there's also the 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 the, the coal, the coke uh, that is being stored on site. And then you get these hoog ovens. Uh, let me see. I believe that they are. Over here, yeah, over here. Here are the whole ovens, uh, and that's the place where uh, the iron ore basically gets converted into uh, carbon steel. And in some cases, they also add some alloy materials to it in order to make it to make it even stronger steel, like molybdenum or, or manganese. Um, but in any case, so this is this is Tata Steel, and what they want to do here, and this is all because of the EU ETS, which we are going to delve into uh, in a minute. Uh, what they want to do is they basically want to eliminate. Uh, the blast furnace steel pit of this plant, and they want to turn it into a uh, steel recycling facility. Now, a steel recycling facility doesn't produce as much steel as a blast furnace steel facility, because blast furnace steel is basically, it's virgin steel, right? And if you are going to recycle, then 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 you you basically are working with a limited resource. So if we go back out, uh, what you see, and I've, I, I'm sorry, I know that some people may have uh, trouble with colors, and I, I will try to uh, work with different colors in the future, I just don't know how. Uh, so what you see is uh, I've made these uh, dark red and these orange, right? The, or the orange ones are all under threat and the dark red ones are certainly under threat. All of that is ArcelorMittal, it's ThyssenKrupp over here. So when you go over here in Germany, this year ThyssenKrupp, this is this is probably as big as the, 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 the plant in Eimuiden. Again, you can see here the rust brown, the black, the white, the limestone. You know, these are gigantic gigantic, gigantic uh, facilities where all of this steel is being made. I believe that this one is ArcelorMittal, as the uh, ArcelorMittal. Uh, and, and just going over here, right, to Oviedo or Dijon, over here, you can see the same thing. I mean, that it dwarfs the city and over here as well. All of this is uh, where where steel, virgin steel is made. By the way, over here you can see a lot of uh, primary industries. So over here, this is aluminium, this is zinc, here they make uh, glass, and over here, this orange bit, this is where you see the windmills, which is, which is uh, what I was trying to say earlier. There is this... Um, 
there is this synergy between steel making and the wind industry because obviously if you want to make all these these huge pylons because that's what you see here all of these are like huge uh, steel columns uh, you need to be right next to the steel industry in order to make sure that you can do this uh, you, you know, with with as much economic uh, efficiency as you can possibly can. So what you see here is that roughly half of all the European uh, steel uh, blast furnace steel uh, manufacturing facilities that they are under threat currently. Uh, here, over here in the Nordics, uh, you have SSAB. Uh, they're doing re relatively well. Over here, there's a blue marker. Uh, this is a thing that I'm going to talk about in the next video. I want to keep that under wraps for today. Uh, but in any case, you can see how big the steel industry is in Europe. And you now know why the steel industry is important for Europe. So Tata Steel in, in, in the Netherlands is considering to close shop ArcelorMittal is considering to reduce activities in France, Germany and Spain. Thyssen Group is considering reducing activities in Germany. Now I don't think that they will ever close a down shop entirely because Thyssen Group simply is too big. I mean this is like this is like one of the major German industrial uh, powerhouses. And then you have Liberty Steel as well. They are also considering reducing activities. They are more concentrated in the east of Europe. So what is causing this, this, this pain that these, uh, these steel uh, manufacturers are uh, feeling? So high energy costs, that, that, that is the first driver of all this. Um, I, I, I keep coming down to, I, I keep coming back to nuclear, uh, the closure of eight gigawatts of nuclear power plants ever since 2020 or 2019. The closure of at least two gigawatts of French nuclear power plants, the closure of two gigawatts of Belgian nuclear power plants. Uh, the, these were Fessenheim. This one here is Tihange and Doul. Um, we have an, uh, an incredibly expensive transition to renewables, uh, particularly wind and solar. And we had a gas crisis which came on the back of the COVID crisis. Uh, the war in Ukraine exacerbated things. Uh, our independence on Russian gas was growing. We had, I believe it was four pipelines, four pipelines coming out of Russia uh, trying to feed gas to uh, Western Europe. And obviously we also have a growing worldwide demand for natural gas. So this all put all together these expensive renewables, these nuclear closures, this gas prices, all of this put, put steel making under threat because nobody wants to keep continuing, keep continue uh, to create steel at that price when you can get it at half price in China. Uh, it, it's simply not tenable. And the final uh, nail in the coffin for uh, European steel manufacturing, it's not that yet, obviously they are still operational, but they're all talking to the government, they all need money, uh, they all need easement of the EU ETS, is the EU emissions trading, uh, emissions trading system. Uh, so what is the EU uh, EU emissions trading system? It's basically a cap and trade uh, program uh, aimed at reducing gas emissions. You can obviously read it yourself. Uh, basically what it does is it says, okay, each country has an X amount of carbon emissions that they may emit. Uh, they can basically give the rights to certain uh, industries to uh, emit an X amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. And when it's gone, uh, then you basically uh, you can buy it somewhere else from somebody who has rights over. And if you don't have any uh, left, any allowance left, then you get to uh, pay a fine. So companies, because this is a trading system, which means that you can actually say, uh, okay, listen, uh, I don't know, Tata Steel and Emiren, uh, would you uh, sell me some of your uh, CO2 allowance? And this is Thyssen Group, for instance. And then basically they, they, they ex you know, the allowance for CO2 emissions exchanges hands. Then Thyssen Group can emit some more 
and Tata Steel and American can emit some less. Uh, and that's how it is supposed to even each other out. And the whole point about this EU ETS is that it is a, uh, you know, it, it, it starts over here. Right now, it's, uh, let's say it's 2024. We have, we have, we still have this much uh, uh, emissions left. And, and the further we go down towards 2050, the less amount of CO2 can be emitted. So the less of allowances are in the system overall in order to make sure that these uh, companies can stay emitting uh, CO2. Now at this moment, uh, it's, it's, it's above, I believe that it is 100 euros per excess ton of CO2 that is being emitted. And these companies, they emit megatons, sometimes even gigatons of CO2 each year and the trouble is as i said the news titans right i mean uh all of these uh industries all of these industries they 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 should be able to reduce their carbon emissions by innovation by making sure that you you know you start doing things differently but this simple inertia of having a big plant and you saw how big the plant was in the beginning of the of the video, if it's a plant that's like twice the size of the, the, the inner city of Amsterdam, the inertia of that thing alone pro prohibits you from simply saying, okay, we are going to demolish this piece of this plant, we're going to install something else, and then we continue work as if nothing has ever happened. I mean, that's just not how things work, especially with these huge plants where each uh, part of the plant depends on the other part of the plant being operational because simply uh, taking out the blast furnaces would mean that you know two-thirds of the other activities that go on on the same site have to be seized because there's no more input for them to work you know to to do stuff with so th this is an incredibly hard problem to tackle incredibly hard and, and, and some of these uh, steel manufacturers, they basically say, well, we'd rather go out of business or we'd rather start recycling uh, because, because making virgin steel simply isn't, it, you know, it, it isn't economically feasible anymore because, because of these high prices, these high energy prices, and because the, the, the European uh, emission trading system basically basically puts us out of business. Because we have to emit CO2. It's almost impossible to make steel without CO2 emissions. Let's get back to the first one, because over here, you see the coal and the coke. What happens is, this is, this is pretty, pretty simple, is that uh, some of the coke simply gets burned and, and turns into CO2. It, ha it happens in the blast furnace and it happens in the converter. Uh, in the converter, you 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 add pure oxygen, so you basically are burning off all this carbon that doesn't get you know doesn't doesn't really form a tight bond with the with the iron that that simply gets burned off. So let me see where were we? Okay, so the news titans. So the reason you know the the trouble is we need domestic steel production. I mean, currently, when we look at the world geopolitically, what you see is, I mean, personally, I become nervous when I see what is happening these days uh, with the war that is in Ukraine, uh, with the BRICS meeting, you know, what you see, BRICS is basically, it's, it's, it's an economic, uh, it's, it's, it's an economic umbrella uh, between China, Russia, uh, India, Brazil, and South Africa, and there's a load of other smaller countries that are also a part of this BRICS uh, economic umbrella. And, 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 and these people are thinking, you know, they, they think differently. They want to do away with the American hegemony. And they, they say, listen, the dollar is too, too strong. Uh, uh, this moment, Russia is facing a lot of penalties, you know, sanctions because they uh, they, they, they are waging a war of choice in, in Ukraine and, and because of, they are facing these, 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 these sanctions and they are so uh, dependent on the dollar, for instance, because of their gas exports and their oil exports and, and, and this, 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 this banking system which ties it all together to which they have no access at this moment. They basically say, well, listen, now we need an alternative. Uh, 
And China and India, they are willing, willing, consenting partners in this regard because you know they 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 need they need the the, the gas, the oil, and the other uh, commodities that they can buy in Russia. They can buy it there for cheap at this moment, so cheap that it's just barter deals. So, which means that if you uh, buy a ton of oil in 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 Russia. What you have to give in return, for instance, is, uh, you know, uh, s s simple manufacturing tools, uh, lathes and, 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 and welding machines and, and all that kind of stuff. That's what's going on currently. So I, I seriously believe that we have to save uh, EU steel fabrication. Uh, and I'm going to tell you how I think that this should be done, how this can be done in the next video. Now... You've made it to the end of the video, and in the end of these videos, I want to thank my Patreon supporters because those people help me pay the bills. If you want to support this channel, please go to Patreon and become a member for tier one, tier two, you name it. Uh, however much you can, you can, you can, you can lose or stand to lose, and m make sure I do a per video donation. So uh, I. I that's how I basically set it up. In any case, if you want to support the channel in other ways, you can become a, a subscriber and you can also uh, leave a comment down below. In any case, thank you all for watching and may the strong force be with you. Bye-bye.